Alright. It's time. Hi there. How have you been? Please do take a seat. Let me tell you a story before we begin. So, I was watching EVO with some friends, the biggest fighting game tournament in the world for those of you who don't know, heavily recommend you give it a watch the rest of this weekend if you'd like. So, it was midnight on the dot in my country, and just as I was getting to sleep, Glitch Productions had the audacity to fucking upload the episode 6 teaser. Of course, I did what any other reasonable person would do. I watched that 39 second teaser a total of 17 times, and then proceeded to make a whole ass video about it, just for you. As you may understand, I'm now tired beyond belief, because unlike any of the previous teasers we have been shown so far, this one contains a load of lore, so, I better not keep you waiting. Let's dissect this teaser frame by frame. And in order to do this, I'm going to play the teaser backwards. Trust me, it's going to make much more sense this way. At the start of the teaser, we see Yuzi, N, and V looking down at what seems to be a pile of rubble on the floor. However, this is actually a big chasm, a huge hole of what seems to be the top of an underground building, which I will assume is the cabin fever labs. As the teaser continues, we dive deeper and deeper into the many floors of the building. Let's analyze them one by one. The first floor has a surgery table covered in drone oil, along with an assortment of surgical scissors. We have actually seen these surgical scissors in episode 5, when the absolute solver wants to tinker with end's memories. This might suggest that this floor was used to tinker with some worker drones, altering their memories or their core programming. Additionally, at this point in the teaser, we also hear this feminine maniacal laugh. <laughs> Now, one might first assume that the character laughing in this scene might be V, because after all, her laugh does sound pretty similar. This is just a guess, so, of course, feel free to take this with a grain of salt, but I think that his laugh here is not from V, but a character we have not had talk before. A character that we know has gone to the cabin fever labs and that has developed paranoid-like behavior since then. Yeah. It's her. I think this laugh is from Yuzi's mom Nori. <laughs> this audio cue right here might not be evidence enough to suggest she's still alive, but at least we know that we will find answers pertaining to her origins or her death in this very episode. Heck, the fact that her laugh plays in this room is not a coincidence. As my current theory stands, I think that the cabin fever labs are the place where Nori, Yiva, and other worker drones were imbued with absolute solver strings, developing their characteristic reality warping powers. It's possible that these drones may have been modified in this very room. Besides, the fact that this is one of the few rooms of the teaser in which we don't see any sign of other worker drones might be enough to suggest that these modifications were made by JC Jensen's staff themselves. Alright, with that out of the way, let's move on to the next floor. Between the worker drone scraps, we see a bunch of camera feeds showing an office environment. The truth is, we actually see the same footage in the floor above it, with some of the footage in both floors being offline or unavailable. It seems to be that this office environment is important for some reason, and some careful work is needed in order to monitor all activity there. From this, we know that the worker drones love to play the hit indie horror game Five Nights at Freddy's. Sorry, let's try to be professional. The thing is, we've seen a control room like this one before. In episode 4, N wanders into a cabin while looking for Yuzi, which oddly enough, has a similar layout to this very floor. It's possible that the purpose of this cabin was the same, to monitor this office environment, aside from the camera that was offline. Now, of course, the obvious question would be, why the need to monitor an office? What could be behind this offline footage? Well, keep watching, it will all make sense later. Oh, speaking of sense. Is that a fucking dinosaur? Is that a fucking dinosaur? Yeah, that's a fucking dinosaur. No clue about this one folks, perhaps this may be one of JC's Jensen's experiments gone wrong, or perhaps it might be an absolute solver creation for all we know. Not much more to say except for hypotheticals, so let's just continue. Ah, yes. The office room. The room that was so carefully watched upon, 
Why is this room so important? Let's take a look at this worker drone lying on the floor. Take a look at her clothes. A great dress. Do they remind you of anything? Have we seen any drones wearing a dress like this? Turns out, we actually have. This is the same grey dress we've seen Yeva and Nori wear in Khan's photographs back in episode 4, and along with their ID cards. This seems to suggest that this grey dress was the official uniform female drones had to wear inside the cabin fever labs. The reason why this office is so important is because this was the place JC Jensen was monitoring the behavior of worker drones imbued with the absolute solver program. This would be where the test subjects would go about their day, doing simple office jobs in old Microsoft 98 computers. However, as this teaser suggests, not all these test subjects had it fine and dandy. Some of the test drones connection with the absolute solver failed, causing their OS to eternally remain in standby. Aside from that, at this point in the teaser, we also hear this baby sound. <coughs> now, this is a tough one. Or at least it would be, were it not for the fact that these five musical notes play right after that. <coughs> Does this song ring any bells? Well, it should. This is actually Yuzu's theme, which has been played many times over during the show. So yeah, this baby cry right here is actually Yuzi. It would also make sense thematically, seeing as we would hear Nora's laugh right after that. <laughs> Alright, so, that's the office room here over and dealt with. Let's see what the deeper floors might show. Perhaps the most evident thing here are the drone corpses with the yellow messages and strings in their visor. Now, Murder Drones is a complicated show to understand all things considered, but if there's something we all can agree on, is that yellow stuff usually equals bad. These might be some worker drones the absolute solver has possessed, much like they have done at the Elliot Mansion when assaulting everyone at the gala. But wait, that's odd. All this time, we've believed the absolute solver to have originated from planet Earth. After all, episode 5 has shown us that the absolute solver bonded with Sin first. But with this evidence in mind, this teaser seems to suggest that the absolute solver originated from the bottom floor of this one elevator, located deep within the confines of the cabin fever labs. From here, the absolute solver escaped, taking control of some worker drones and making a hole through the roof of this building. But this leads to a critical stump. A stump that I believe might be resolved by the time episode 6 releases. If the absolute solver was indeed created in Copper 9, how were they able to bond and control Sin from so far away? Well, I only see three possible hypotheses to this. And to be honest, either one of these puts everything we know of the lore upside down. 1. The Absolute Solver did really have it in their capabilities to control Sin from so, so very far away. 2. The Absolute Solver teleported itself to Earth to control Sin at the junkyard. Or 3. And in my opinion, the most interesting hypothesis, the Absolute Solver didn't need to teleport to another planet. In fact, Sin and the Absolute Solver were in the same planet to begin with. This planet, Copper 9, may not actually be an exoplanet after all. My third hypothesis is that Copper 9 is actually the planet Earth, devoid of any biological life. What? Planet Earth is actually Copper 9? That's actually impossible. You're just thinking that way because you don't have any clue of how the Absolute Solver possessed Sin. We know Copper 9 has two different moons, and that already makes it different from Earth. The only cohesive explanation for Copper 9 to be planet Earth is for planet Earth to have warped from one place in the universe to another. Alright, listen here, you weird, weird, weird butler. butler. Assuming that this bonkers crackpot hypothesis is true, which is a huge assumption by the way, what kind of planetary level cataclysm that we have seen in the show so far could have possibly moved the Earth to another solar system, thus stopping their core instability and wiping out all biological life on Earth? Nothing? Really? Fine, allow me to just... Uh, 
Again, this is my big crackpot hypothesis, so please don't take it as gospel just yet. Alright, that's all I have for today. I will now proceed to disappear until episode 6 releases. Expect to see a big video by then. Alright. Have fun sleeping tonight. Uh, survivalist, heroic as a tiger is. Earn my stripes cause you know I'm do or die with this. Journey started young, super hard headed. Call me crazy but you is not my psychiatrist. Been through a lifetime of strife and struggling. Be the best, that's my covenant.